This is cool. <laughs> Have that other sensor there. Oh, sorry. Actually, that one. <laughs> I had it right there, ready and waiting for you. So, we're putting these sensors on for what now, Adam? Um, we're hopefully going to get a more accurate reading. We're going to map the wood that's already missing the decay. So, we, we can clearly see that this section of the tree is missing and decayed from the limb that ripped out previously. Yeah. Um, so the first one was a trial to make sure everything was set up yeah. um, uh, in the correct manner. And uh, that was a success. So now we're on the second stage. We're on the second stage and hopefully a more accurate result, um, which we should see soon enough. But them sugar babies are not a good sign, <laughs> no. are they? Nope. These guys are showing, are decaying the tree even more. And so these are the cables that are all attaching to each other. Yeah. To communicating with each other. Communicating with all the sensors. So they all communicate with each other, but they're also all the way around the tree. Yeah, correct. And they're gonna, as we tap each sensor, um, these sensors pick up um, the rate of sound moving through a known density. So, um, we have the density of horse chestnut. Yeah. Aeschylus hippocastinum. You have um, to, you, when you're doing this, you have to say what species, what of, species trees. of tree it is. Yeah. So the, so the software knows uh, the density and it knows at which the rate of sound moves through that material. So then once we start with sensor one and move in a clockwise direction around the tree, the sensors will pick up. Uh, the rate of speed from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 6, 1 to 7, the whole way right round, and then from 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 6, and they map the tree in a 2D image cross-section. In a density, to see how dense it is yeah. and how deep this rot goes in. It looks like, you know, we're wiring up the tree with, uh, you know, bags of fluids or something. <laughs> I suppose it is doctoring a tree. It's kind of, you were saying, you were describing it once as kind of like an MRI of a tree. Yeah, yeah. Is basically what, it's an echo sounding MRI. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Basically, an ultrasound, basically. An ultrasound, yeah. So this is the, whoops, that was gone. There. So this is the first test that we did. And then we're doing another one where it in, we, tracing into that. Yeah. To get a better result, more accurate result. So what's that caliper being used for? So we're just going to take the distance from five to seven. And so that's from the hollow to a non-hollow. So outside to outside. So we can then go into the software. So yeah. So it was 52. 52. Yeah. 52 is the measurement from of the density. To five. Ah, so five there to this one. So that section there, that's a cool tool. So if we go sensor seven to five is 51. So that shows you how accurate we are. So we're only one centimeter out. Wow. So we're mapping that tree. We're only a centimeter out from sensor to sensor. Wow. 
Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Incredible accuracy. Yeah. All using an so, old-fashioned tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But like we just made that. We shouldn't probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was your invention, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. It's just... We need to get a better one. But, but it's to check out what to re make sure you've got it right. Yeah, yeah, that exactly. That we're doing our minuses right. I I, I know minuses can yeah. be very um. So if we go now from seven or eight to eleven. So eleven's on the outside. To make sure that. So we have 39 there. 39, okay. And it says it on the computer as. 8 to 11. We're way out there on that one. Oops. So we're 57. So. We need to, we need to recalculate our pluses and minuses. Yeah. And the pluses and minuses are from a true circle and it's recalculating the indent ins and outs yep. of a natural tree trunk yep. Yep. from a, a pure circle into a tree trunk circle yep. Yep. or circumference, I should say. So what was that? Eight to 11, was it? Eight to 11, yeah. Uh, this next phase so happening now? The next phase is to start uh, tapping the sensors to introduce the frequency into the wood. Um, so the software can measure the speed at which the sound travels from each sensor, one sensor to each other. Okay, so and that means she gets to use my favorite new tool. <laughs> <laughs> and you, what you're gonna do is you just do, what, how are you doing it? So just tap each sensor. So I'll yeah. do the first one. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Right now. Again. Go again. Yeah. Next one. Number two. So you're looking for. Go again. So we're going to take uh, three measurements. We're trying to get as little as change as possible in the speed uh, that the sound travels from one sensor to the next. So next one. the more accurate Sarah is with the hammer the hammer um so number three she's on to number three she's next. on to number three now so go again go again go again and again go again okay so now she's going to do number four. four go again and again and again, yeah, and number five, yeah, yeah, go again, next one, number six, yeah, okay, next one. Oh, these are the fun ones, in the <laughs> hollow. Done or? Yeah, go next one. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Yeah, nine. Another one. Ten. Eleven. Again, again, next one. Again, again, again. Yeah. Done? Yeah. Ha! You ready for the reveal? Okay, let's, let's go for the reveal now. Okay. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm. Not good. Nope. 
Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Even I and I know I no idea what you're talking about. So, the red is the real rot and the yellow is the weak. Yeah, so that's pretty much where there's it's just sponge. Yes. And then yellow is weakening. Weakening as well, uh, which is quite poor, but we'll see now what percentage weakening it has. And it's very bad. Oh very bad. Minus thirty eight percent strength. <gasps> Janie. So if we get a, if we get a southerly wind. Yeah. So if we get a southerly, southerly wind coming from here in this direction. Yeah. It's 38% weaker on this side. Which is supposed to be so, the side that's strong which against it, the wind. Against the wind. So most trees fail in compression because of compression failure. Yeah. So it's um, the compress where the wind. If the wind is coming this way, it's going to compress, compress this, the on fibers that side. on this side. Yeah. So that's quite bad. That's yeah. Ooh, ooh. It's not good for this tree. No, no, and being a horse chestnut in particular. Yep. I mean they're notoriously spongy. So that when they start going bad, so the red is where it's completely sponged. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> so my thought was correct at the very get-go. Yep. Being a horse chestnut. Now, if it was a beech tree, it could very well be yep. fine. Yep. It totally depends on the species as to how that calculates. Yeah. Oh, feck. It looks like that's the end of this tree, maybe. So, when are you coming to take this tree down? <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is a German kit. Yeah. So, this so you've, you've, this is, this is um, uh, from Germany that you kind of learned all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, designed by a man called um, Frank Rinn. Yeah. At, at Rintech. Okay. Um, is his company. Yeah. And it's called an Arbatom. Uh, an Arbatom. Arbatom. Oh, look. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, this has been out for almost 20 years. Um, this particular piece of kit, I think Lena said, is maybe 15 or 16 years old. Um, and they have been, they, But they have been carrying out sound tomographies for 20 years in Germany. Okay. Uh, in order to give a recommendation to what you should do to the tree. It's yeah. It's not just... Oh, we're going to reduce this tree by four meters because it's decayed. Yeah. Because that might actually be excessive. Yeah. Uh, so from this, we can calculate uh, knowing um, the, the tree's location. Yeah. We know that this area is probably going to see in a 50 year storm event. Yeah. Probably going to see a 25 meter per second storm. Yeah. So we can calculate for that. Yeah. Knowing that, with the tree height and the diameter and yeah. circumference at that known height, yeah, the sensors are placed. Yeah, we can calculate what force the wind will exert on that tree canopy. Yeah, and then we can basically work out how many meters the tree needs to be reduced by. But then we'll look at okay, is the or does the tree need to come out? Completely, yeah. Completely. Yeah. Um, so, like, there'll, there will come a point when you're going to take too much off that tree and it's, it's not... It's, gonna, not it's not viable for the tree for anymore. The tree. No, no. And not. also, the main reason, as everybody in the video will see, we're right next to the road. Yeah. So, the safety is not whether this tree stays up or not. The safety is for the road. Yeah. yeah. And whether... So, I mean, it's a really good thing, this calculation, if to reduce the tree or to take it out completely yeah. Yeah. and which is the best thing not just for the tree but for the safety yeah. of and for your peace of mind and my peace of mind yeah. i mean because you don't want that massive tree to come down across the road in a coming storm no definitely not yeah so so these calculations are going to be going to uh the woman who is teaching you about this yeah. and um uh, dr lena zook from uh, arbor analyst in hamburg ah very good 
And are you the only people doing this in Ireland? Um, there may be one more, but I, there's, this is the first uh, Arbitom in Ireland. So this is the first of its kind here. In Ireland? Yeah. So Frank Grin knows every one of his clients who uses his software. Yeah. He's a personal relationship with them. Yeah. And that's the way he likes to keep it. Yeah. Um, so this is the first of its kind in, in Ireland. Um, and it's, it's really quite accurate. Excellent. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing the results. And whether I have to lose a tree <laughs> or it can decrease the crown for its own health as well as for people who are passing by on the road's health. Isn't that about right? Yep.